What's happening, everybody? And welcome to today's edition of Swag Talk, the show where we cover the swag inside and out. I'm your host, Charles Wells, a.k.a. C. Wells, a.k.a. your swag tour guide. And we're going to continue our tour around the swag. We're going to go ahead and drive on over to Houston, Texas, and check out the Texas Southern Tigers. We're going to talk some Texas Southern football and, and see what their schedule has in store for them. Uh, before we do all that, as usual, you can catch the socials down below. So go ahead and hit those up, uh, like, follow, whatever the case may be. Check out the podcast, Swag Talk, on Anchor.fm, which is anchor.fm slash Swag Talk, uh, Spotify, Stitcher, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Um, we have a Texas Southern preview up on there as well, so feel free to check that out. Um, if you haven't done so already, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to this page. Uh, it's growing really fast, and, and there's a lot of love and support going on, so I, I really appreciate it. Um, so subscribe. Uh, hit that notification bell to be alerted to any content that comes up. Um, like the videos, comment, and share, So and enjoy yourself. Um, tomorrow, another edition of Swag Smoke coming at you, so that should be great. Uh, Sunday, we're going to preview our final team when we talk about UAPB. And then uh, Wednesday next week, we're going to preview the MEAC Swag Challenge because that game is on Saturday, August 28th. So the season is right around the corner. Not much time left. So if you haven't, you know, made your plans for your season, then I suggest you probably should go ahead and do that. Um, and if you haven't said your preseason prayers and all of that kind of stuff, man, you need to go ahead and get on it because the season about to kick off. Um, if you're gonna have if your team having a you if you if you if you think your team have a down year, you need to go ahead and declare it now before things get too bleak. So go ahead and do that. Make all your wild predictions and enjoy yourself because the season is on the way. So let's go ahead and talk Texas Southern. This was a team they played a very short um fall season, excuse me. So not a lot to really take away from that. They averaged about 21 points per game on offense. Uh, allowed 35 on defense, ran the ball for about 132 yards game, um, passed for about 270. Um, defensively, they uh, allowed about 160, 160 some odd yards on the ground rushing and about 217 passing. So I think defensively, they actually played really well in the spring. Obviously, two games is a very small sample size. But when you look at the numbers that they put up in 2019, they were not good at all on defense. So any to me, any kind of gains, no matter how incremental they are, are very positive for this team. Offensively, that really wasn't Texas Southern's problem in 2019. Their problem was untimely turnovers and just consistency, because they have been they have been capable of scoring uh, scoring from anywhere. Um, they've had uh, Donnie Corley was a big-time receiver. Uh, Trendavion Dixon was another guy. They had uh, DeAndre Johnson, at quarterback in 2019. Devin Williams also filled in a little bit there. So they had some pieces. Um, Dominic Franklin, uh, Franklin Stein, as I heard him called on the radio a couple of times, um, that's a guy, that was a guy who was a big-body guy. But they have some nice pieces now. I just don't, I just don't think they have enough to be a formidable team yet, but they're getting there. Uh, Coach McKinney is really working hard on building this building this program because they have to start and, and work their way up. I, I, I like Jalen Brown, the quarterback, a lot. He's young. He's 6'2". Um, he has a really good arm, and he's he's learning the college game, so that's something that uh, if he can develop, I think this offense will get better because they do have um, two guys in Ja'Cory Howard, and uh, Ladarius Owens, they are two really good running backs. Uh, they both average over four and a half yards per carry. Um, I think Owens averaged 5.2 yards per carry and Howard averaged four and a half. So those are really good guys. Um, you have receivers like Keelan Davis, um, Osby Mitchell. Jonathan Giles is a guy who everybody, you, you know, a lot of people talk about he was at Texas Tech, then he went to LSU. I think another year in this system, a full season in this system, can definitely help him a lot. He's a guy who's proven that he can make some plays. Uh, his time at LSU didn't go as great as it should have, but 
he's capable and that that gives them some targets you know good you know a couple good receivers some solid running backs and an improving offensive line is a is a recipe for a better season i just don't really like the way the schedule plays out and we'll talk about that in a minute but i i do like a lot of those individual pieces and some of those guys are guys you're gonna see on all swag teams in the future um, it's gonna probably take some work for some of them to make it this year because the swag is loaded offensively with talent. So there's a lot of guys who could make it but won't. And you may see a couple of those guys unless you have somebody have a Donnie Corley type of season that leaves the swag and receiving. So that's gonna be you know a, a big a big if. But I do like I, I do like the pieces. Uh, I don't know if there's gonna be a quarterback battle, but a lot of people are high on Andrew Body. He's uh, the 4A Texas player of the year. So he threw for over 15,000 yards in high school. That's a baller. But I think that, you know, this is a good problem to have. This is a problem that Texas Southern hasn't had two good quarterbacks. They've had a bunch of quarterbacks, but they haven't had two good guys um, to to make some things happen. But I think this is Jalen Brown's job um, right now going forward. Defensively, you you have uh, – um. Michael Batajo, who was a, a, a all sweat guy, he's a, a, a force on the defensive line. Um, Demontario Anderson, defensive line. Uh, the Arkansas back, he was a big time linebacker uh, in uh, in 2017. He battled injuries the, the last couple of years, but he's a playmaker at linebacker. Uh, he he played in the spring, so that that helps. Um, I, I really I really think those couple of pieces are, are really solid guys. But they don't have enough depth right now. Um, defensive back, they added Derek Tucker, who was a defensive back at Texas AM. He just transferred in. Defensively is where this team is gonna have to develop because I think offensively, I think that I think they can keep themselves in games as long as they take care of the football. Um, defensively is gonna be a work in progress. I think the defense probably wearing that more than um as far as losing not keeping them in but this team is i think this is a team on the rise right now the schedule doesn't do them any favors and we're going to take a look at the schedule um we'll start with the first game of the season which is the labor day classic on september 4th against prairie view that's a home game for texas southern i give i i really i really think texas southern has a good chance in this game um prairie view is not solidified on offense yet. They're probably going to have some kings to work out. Defensively, Purdue's defense is good. So I think you're probably going to see a low-scoring game. And in a situation like that, that favors a team that's, you know, that's trying – that favors the underdog because I think they have an opportunity if they can get a stop or two late and get that late touchdown or field goal, you get yourself a better chance to win. And they were right there in the spring – so I think they feel like they should have taken that win. Um, if you look back at 2019, they had three um, losses in swag play by less than seven points. Uh, they lost to Alabama State, I think, by four points. Lost to Southern by seven, and then they lost to Alabama and them by seven in overtime. So this team has been close. They just haven't gotten over the hump. Um, I think Prairie View is a good opportunity. Now, I still like Prairie View winning this game. Because I think Prairie View defense is the difference maker. Um, if they can slow down Texas Southern enough, then I think Prairie View's offense can kind of feel their way into a couple of touchdowns and, and, and steal this game. But I do like Texas Southern's chances in this game. Uh, I think they have a great opportunity if they play well. So this is a game I would not be surprised if they won. But right now I'm going with Prairie View. Uh, September 11th, they're at Baylor. That's a money game, so you can cut the check on that one. Um, not too much to be said about that. September 25th, at the bye week, they play Rice on the road. Um, Rice is not good. Now, I'm not about to sit here and tell you that Texas Southern going to win this game because Rice is a horrible FCS team, FBS team, but if this team was more experienced and better, I would give them a better opportunity in this game, but this this is the kind of game that I think you know Rice probably will stumble and fumble their way around and and you know just find their way to win. Texas Southern may be able to score a couple of touchdowns 
I don't really expect too much from this game. October 2nd, they host North American University for homecoming. Now, if you've seen me on this channel, you know I've cracked mad jokes about this game. And, you know, all, all seriousness, this is a game that Texas Southern most likely should win. Um, I'm really going to sit down and study this team because I'm genuinely curious about them. Um, my, you know, whenever I joke about this game, it's really more from a sense of genuine curiosity. Um, I'm going to try to listen to the game for sure if I can, because I, you know, I think this is the, this is going to be the W. This is going to break the losing streak on the field. Obviously off the field, the streak is broken, but on the field, I think this is the game that they win. Now going forward, I don't really want to see these kind of games on the schedule especially if you're a team that's wanting to be a contender in the conference or the division, these kind of games, they don't help you. Um, looking at what they have coming up the next week, this game, other than the opportunity to win and probably get some stats and get some guys, some reps, it doesn't really help you. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how, about that non-conference slate as a whole in a minute, but that Southern game on October 9th is a tough game. But they played Southern tough the last couple of years. And even though that game was a, a, a fairly comfortable Southern win in the spring, Texas Southern really fought and, and clawed in that game early. Um, they were starting a freshman quarterback, and he had some rough some rough go early, but he stayed with it. Uh, the running game was able to find a couple of things here and there. They hit a couple of big pass plays in the first half. Uh, they were ultimately done in by bad special teams play at the almost at the end of the second second quarter. And then third quarter, Southern was able to do what Southern does, and that's run the football and wear you down. So Texas Southern has to force turnovers from Southern. They have to keep themselves in this game um, at all times. They have to keep Southern within arm's distance. Southern style of football can, can predicate games like that. Um, if Southern doesn't get the edge early, those – Slow drives are those, you know, you know, not it, not really successful drives. Keep teams in the game, but the second half is where a team falls falls apart. So I feel like this is going to be another game where Southern pulls pulls it all out. But Texas Southern is definitely going to be game, um, which puts them into the October sixteenth matchup against Grambling. This is another game that I feel like right now on paper. This is a game I think Texas Southern has a good chance in. I'm not saying they're going to win, but I think they have a good chance. Now, Grambling's getting better. I don't, you know, I don't care what anybody says about Grambling. You never count the G-men out. Um, when they're down, they typically find a way to turn it around. They had a lot of issues in the spring that were not necessarily on the field play issues, although they didn't look great in their last couple games. The first couple of games, they played fairly well. They just didn't really do much offensively. But Grambling is a dangerous team. They still have some, some firepower, and that defense is still going to be hard hitting. So this is a, a tough game. Um, Texas Southern plays Grambling close from time to time. It's at Grambling. That's the one difference that I, I, I have. If this game was at Texas Southern, I would give them a better opportunity. This is another game that I think they can win, but they won't. But, I, you know, if things go better, I would not be hesitant to pick Texas Southern to win this game. But right now I'm going with Grambling. Uh, October 23rd, they host Alcorn. Tough matchup. You know, Alcorn, first year in the West Division. You know, just like we say with a few other teams, we don't really know how Alcorn is going to be, but Alcorn has a track record. And that's what makes people predict Alcorn to do what Alcorn does. They ain't lost a lot. And, yes, I said ain't. They ain't lost a lot. So they're going to still be tough. Um, Felix Harper, the trigger man, is still at Lee Charles Pringle. Big dog at receiver. Um, Nico Duffy running back. That defense may not have been that Alcorn defense over the last couple of years, but they still are. they still will hit you. So I, I don't care what nobody say. Alcorn still will hit you on defense, and that can go a long way in games. So I think they'll find a way, not even find a way to win. I think they'll win this game against Texas Southern. October uh, 30th, they, ho they host uh, Pine Bluff. 
another game, any other year, I would probably say that this is a game that I would give a chance to win. Um, a lot of people are really all over the place with Palm Bluff in the preseason. The, uh, the media picked them fifth. I picked them third. They added a nice couple pieces out of the portal. Yes, they lost uh, Harry Ballard on defense on uh, offense, so that that hurts. Um, they, they lost a couple of other defensive pieces, but I still think this team has enough. But their running game is definitely going to have to improve for them to really contend. So I think Texas Southern has a good, not a good chance, but I think they can compete in this game at home. I just don't think they'll win. But this is a game that. I can, you know, I can feel a little bit more comfortable saying that they have a, a, a decent chance in. So that puts them in the November 6th matchup against Jackson State. We've said it for t- basically seven or eight previews already, whatever, wherever Jackson is on somebody's schedule. We've said it. We're going to keep saying it till we finish. This team on paper can be deadly. This team on paper can be a beast. This team on paper can demolish everybody. Now, we have to wait and see how they play on the field. I think that by this point in the season, they will be playing probably their best football because I think this team will be that found their groove. I don't know what the beginning of the season is going to look like, but they most likely will finish strong. This is a tough matchup for Texas Southern, at least on paper. Um, I think Jackson has too much for them, so I think they win. And that puts them in November 13th matchup at home against Alabama AM. Again, this is defending swag champs from the spring. Offense, well, is bueno. Offense, you know, five tons of firepower, lots of receivers. Running game is there. It may not be the best, but you know, they they can run the ball when they need to. And you have the best quarterback in the league in a kill glass. So offensively, we know what AM is. Defensively, they still have some pieces that they're adding, and those guys need to gel. So we can't really say defensively that they're, they're gonna be great, but they just need to be all right to keep to keep a lot of offense to do their job. So this is a tough matchup for Texas Southern. Uh that team they played close in 2019. This ain't really the same team. So AM wins this game, which sends them into the final game on November 20th against Alabama State. Alabama State can finish anywhere in the standings, but defensively, you know, Bubba Adams, uh, Cole Pepper, Christian Clark, the 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 space eater in the middle, Ursa Davis, the, the the names go on and on on defense. Uh, Ezra Gray on offense, he's a return man. He's a big play running back, gets the ball to backfield. Uh, Jacory Merritt, a little bit more of a banger although they are similar heights. Um, you know, Ryan Nettles is improving week by week. I think he's one of a lot of people's favorite quarterbacks in the league. I, I think Texas Southern matches up with them, you know, if they play if they play better, um, if they could continue to jail. But right now on the road at the end of the season, I'm, I'm hesitant to pick them. Um, I don't know where either one of these teams' mind state would be at this point in the season. These late season games with teams like this, it's hard to it's hard to really think of where they'll be. Uh, Texas Southern could be playing better. They may not have a lot of wins, but they could be playing better. Alabama State could be out of the race. This is their last swag game before the Turkey Day Classic, so they could be playing out the string, and you know Texas Southern might be able to get them, or they might still be in it. We just don't know. So. Right now, I, I'm going Alabama State, and that gives Texas Southern a, not a pretty record at all, just looking on paper, uh, one and ten. But I think they do have um, some opportunities at games, and that one and ten is the, uh, to me is their worst case scenario because I do think they'll win a sweat game. I just right now on paper, I'm I can't really pinpoint which one I think. Um, I would say probably if I had to give the if I had to rank the games from best chance to, to worst chance and only really talking about the best chance games, I would say Prairie View is their best chance of winning, followed by Gramlin, and then maybe Pine Bluff and Alabama State. Everything else is not impossible, but I think it takes a little bit more work. So I would say the best case scenario is like four and seven, 
Uh, worst case scenario is one in 10. Um, I can be talked into a couple wins because I think they probably will win a game or two. I just right now, I just don't know which one. So don't, don't, I got a lot of really enthusiastic Texas Southern fans that, that watch the show, man. So y'all please know, I love y'all. I'm not, I'm not trying to hate on y'all by saying, you know, the Tigers are going one in 10 because I, I really don't think they're going to finish one in 10, but looking at paper, you know, I, I right now I just can't can't say now. Nah, maybe they beat Prairie View. I, I I think they got a really good chance. And I'm backpedaling so much I could be a cornerback right now. But I think that they're gonna be a better team again. Like I said about Valley, I think they'll be better than their record shows. They will be a tough out. This is gonna be the kind of team, man. If you come in there lollygagging and lackadaisical, they're gonna mess up your Saturday for real. So you need to be focused when you play Texas Southern. You can't look at that team and say they didn't win a game in the spring. They didn't win a game in 2019. We're going to walk through them because you're going to go home with an L. So don't nobody can approach Texas Southern like that. I think they'll be a, a better team. I just don't think they'll be a great team or even a good team right now as far as record goes. Um, one thing, I, uh, well, a couple of things I wanted to say. Uh, finally, about the schedule, I do not like that non-conference schedule at all, man. I, you know, we can agree to disagree. You know, I understand money games. I hate, I hate two FBS games in one season. I hate that, man. I don't care who do it. You know, there's a couple um other schools and other conferences that do it. I hate it with a passion. One money game to me is enough. I understand why, but I hate that, man. And uh. You know, two FBS games and then a non-D1, non-D2, whatever team is not a good non-conference slate to me. They need a dub. So I'm cool with that North American game right now. But like I said, future years, I mean, not that anybody got to ask me about making a schedule, but future years, I don't I don't really want to see that because those kind of games don't do anything for you. And those two money games, they, you know, they, they give you an opportunity to play against somebody I ain't really I'm I'm not really one of those people who feel like injuries increase more when you play non-conference games against FBS teams because I don't really think that's true. But I just don't think you develop as well playing two FBS games instead of playing at least one FCS game against a team in your area because there's a, a, a few. Now you can only schedule who wants to schedule you. So I'm not I'm not throwing no shots at Texas Southern per se, but I'm just saying in general, I don't like that. Um, the last thing I want to say, I, you know, one of my things that I really, I really like to say about game, about the season is, is I, I want everybody to go to games if you can. I've been saying, you know, cause we have a lot of new people out here. If you can attend a game, please do. But this is the one time you're going to hear me say, man, if you can't go to a game, it's all right to stay at home because, Hopefully, I don't know, you know, like I said, I think Texas Southern has the best radio broadcast that I've ever heard. Um, Chatterbox, man, you got to hear him, man. So I hope he calling games this year, man. Uh, if anybody from Texas Southern know that Chatterbox going to be calling the games this year, man, let me know in the comments because if he ain't calling y'all games, I ain't listening. Man, that dude cracks me up, bro. I, I just, you know, you really have to listen to how he gets into a game. And he called it like it is, man. He he loves those Tigers. And he's going to point out people in the stands. And he's going to, you know, he's going to call a good game. So if you can't go to a game, don't, you know, if you can catch a Texas Southern game on the radio, man, please do. Like I said, if I, I hope he's still calling games. So if he is, man, y'all check that out. Um no offense to anybody else if, if anybody else calling the games, but I love I love Chatterbox, man. That dude cracks me up. So that's that's going to do it for Texas Southern. Our last preview is Sunday. We're going to go to Pine Bluff and talk about the Golden Lions. And uh, like I said before, Thursday, another edition of Swag Smoke. Uh, we're going to talk about hard jobs in the Swag, you know, programs that are tough to win at, what's going to take to win there, and, you know, why they can't win. So make sure y'all check that out tomorrow. I'm your boy, Charles Wells, your swag tour guide. I'm signing out, man. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll catch you on the rebound.